Hi everybody. I am trying to set this up so it makes sense and you can see things. Um, my name is Shulamit Lazarus and I'm known, I guess, from my walk away video um, as the liberal flower child grandma <laughs> turned gun, gun toting but not quite exactly because I actually got hurt trying to cock the gun. Um, so I haven't figured that out yet. Um, also healer and life coach and you can learn more about me in my in my information below I want to talk about why people get stuck I want to talk about why people get stuck from a different perspective um, and if I don't always look into the camera which I have the slightest idea where it is um, more importantly I just want you to hear what I have to say I'm clairsentient so Often I just focus in on my body um, and so I may close my eyes. I'm deeply, deeply with you and sharing things from, from my desire to have you understand how fully incredible you are and that the places that you're stuck in are not places you need to be stuck in. That sounds like really glib, but I'm actually going to take it to a completely different level. And that level is data. Um, I haven't heard anybody talk from the perspective that I'm talking from, and it may be alien to you. Um, it is, however, scientifically confirmed. So when I talk about something, I'm talking from the perspective of science, even though I'm at my core deeply, deeply about God. Um, I also bring everything together and dovetail it from a scientific perspective too, because I'm also extremely pragmatic and I want to understand how things work so I can break it down and share it with you. If you're my client, then you've already uh, experienced the benefit of that. And if you're a subscriber and you're getting value, I want to share whatever it is I can to be a contribution to your life. And people think in terms of being stuck as, um, as a legacy or as something they have to drag with them for the rest of their lives. And I have worked with people that are on meds for depression and have cleared the depression even though the meds weren't holding them. Um, and my perspective is that everything is data. It's not easy to explain, so it'll take time. Again, I don't do 10 minute videos. And if you get value from me, it's because you're patient enough to sit and go through a journey with me until you come out the other end, leaving with a gift that you didn't have when you came in. So I want us to start thinking in relationship to what thought is. But first, I want us to look at what we think reality is. Reality, you can, you can hear things, you can feel things, you can see things, and you can swear that they are material. However, there is not one scientist that has ever found matter. I want you to really think about that. Like, look at all the digging and the, and the, and the Hadron colliding and all, all of the stuff that they're doing to, dis, to, to burn and dice and split. <clears throat> and they keep trying to find the next particle and the next particle and the next particle. I think the last one's like, oh, it's, we found the God particle. Or maybe we're going to find the God, God particle. Because, of course, what do they want to do? This dark power operation that is trying to take over our our country um, is all about 
let's get that and be able to use it and capitalize it and uh, profit from it. I want you to profit from the same thing. I want to teach you things that nobody's talking about. That will empower you and liberate you to know that you are far more magnificent than how these people who have contempt for you address you as the pawns and the peons of their game. So let's look at science and take away the political and the power struggle and all of that. Let's just look at true scientists who are looking at things and curious and try and break things down and find matter. They have never found it. Einstein talked about energy and energy and information are interchangeable. Energy and matter are interchangeable. Well, if you look at the equation of A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, right? Very simple geometry. So if energy and information and matter are interchangeable, then matter is actually energy. Matter then is actually information. So when you bring up anything that is three-dimensional, you're really addressing a packet of information. And I'm going to call that information data. So we're talking about bytes and bits. And the computer analogy and metaphor are both completely appropriate. So when we're thinking in terms of everything is energy and that everything that we perceive is the only thing, the only thing that we can actually substantiate is fact is our experience. That's it. Because if you break it down, you'll find out that the voice that you're hearing coming out of me is not sound, but it is made of data. And the sun that you see outside and that you think is yellow, there isn't such a color as yellow. It's made of data. And the thing that you're feeling that feels so real to touch and so solid is not material that you can actually ever touch because your molecules and the molecules of this are as far apart as here to Saturn. Yet you have an experience of touching and seeing color and hearing my voice. But in fact, what you're experiencing is consciousness. So starting from that understanding that your consciousness is receiving packets of information that we call things, we're going to say they're data. Now there may be pieces of this that get a little confusing for you or feel like they're missing for you and you can certainly question me in the comments because I'm... 99.9% .9 on my comments now that I know how to do that and I answer everybody. However, if you're a troll, I will let you know that I'm not going to give you much of my energy because I don't cast my pearls before swine. I think the Bible is very, very smart in that way. It teaches cosmic and energetic truths and I'm not a Bible person, but that one is something that I, I think is really important. So getting back to um, 
to the whole issue of data. Okay, so when so if if now we'll 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 just take that that from me that everything is energy, right? Everything is consciousness. Now we have scientists that actually say that there is nothing here that isn't backed or come from consciousness. And those of you who are in alignment with where I am in relationship to a divine source of all things, sentient and unsentient and formed and unformed, know that where I come from is that everything is God. But for now, we're going to say that there's an intelligence in everything. And intelligence is information and information is data. So we're breaking it down. So when you have a thought, you create a field of data. That's a thought form. That thought form will disintegrate if you don't visit it again. And when you visit it again, the reason why you visit it again is because it has some kind of meaning for you. And the meaning for you is what starts is to, starts to charge the thought more magnetically. So it has more substantiation to it. So let's look at the words, it matters. As you all know by now, if you've been watching me, words mean a lot to me because they tell the values and the understandings that we as a human society have that is unconscious. Like I got great vibes off of that guy. I don't feel good energy about him and so on. So when we say it matters, what we're really saying, what is the it that matters? It is some kind of thought that we then revisit and create a connection of meaning to it, which then typically has also feeling involved, which is charging it magnetically. And that feeling state, happy, sad, glad, mad, you know, although that feeling state is actually a feeling state, not to be confused with emotion, because you can be angry and crying, you can be happy and crying, there's no linear connection, right? So you have this feeling state that is around this, this thought form that you revisited with connection and meaning, and maybe you will have some emotion which will be in your body, and your body-mind will experience um, a, a, a movement inside it to recalibrate it and that comes out as emotion and we can talk about that another time but anyway so you have this magnetic charge around this thought and so what happens is every time something comes close to it it gets more and more fed so to speak so it becomes a seed right from the form that it becomes a seed then it starts growing right and then we will say it matters because it's pulling towards it a substantiation. You're substantiating it constantly by running the track again and again and again. And so what ends up happening then is we say it matters because on some level we know we just gave it more form. And then when we say we want to let go of something, again, we're talking about the something that has no three-dimensional reality to it, yet it has substantiation to it for us, right? And we drop it. We speak in those words all the time as if the things that actually have no form have actual concrete form. I let it go. I dropped it. I'm not attached to it, right? This is all done through feeling and meaning making. 
Meaning making is the, the, is the hugest thing that is going on. Because all of those people that are sitting in front of the media being fed all of the poison are being done by stories. And meaning making is making stories. Now what we want is we want meaning making that forwards you, that doesn't hold you back, right? It's all about a story. You can't have a feeling without a story. You only have a direct experience of your divine being, which has no time. It has no past, present, or future. It is only now. And it is perfection in that moment, right? But in order to have feelings and emotions, there's always a story. So it's meaning making. So what happens is that you're, now I want you to realize that you are an organic, self-evolving, self-organizing computer. I want, you, I want you to really bring that into you. You are an organic, self-evolving, self-organizing computer. And the computers that are being made are being fashioned after us. We are not being fashioned after them. We are the most brilliant computer, the most astonishing computer that has ever been created divinely created and so in that our very being the consciousness that we are is the computer it's not something that you do as much as something that you are you are always taking in information billions and billions of bits of information that if you actually had to perceive in the complete packets of things called things and colors and sounds and hearing and all the things that we go through with our senses that you would you would be totally overwhelmed right so that's why you perceive in packets you call things perceptions so when you bring out a thought and you don't strengthen it by going back to it, it disintegrates. But when you bring meaning to it, you're actually charging it, right? So what happens in terms of getting stuck, and this is typically from birth to seven, and after that it's playback. It's even in the Bible, give me, give me a child until seven and I'll have the man. The Nazis knew that. these dark operators that are trying to overthrow our country through media and entertainment, they know that. Because they are dumbing down our children. There's a reason why we're in virtual schools. They don't learn. They say so, they don't learn. They don't learn, they can't remember. And then you shoot them with an infrared in the pineal gland these tender pineal glands doing God knows what to their brain, but certainly dumbing them down because I had an infrared thermometer shot into my head only once. Don't let it happen. At the dentist, a holistic dentist. He didn't realize until after I said it to him. And then he never did it again because he realized the danger of it. And I immediately felt my field change. Being clairsentient, I'm extremely sensitive to frequencies. That's why I'm able to do the kind of work that I do and the healing that I do and I'm able to access the issues that people are stuck in without them even realizing it because I can feel their thoughts. So my field completely changed and it hurt. I did some tapping on it when I was sitting in the chair to get my, my field back to normal but then realized about a week or two later that I was having problems with finding words. Okay? Now, I'm also a homeopath. I knew that I had become slightly brain damaged. I got the remedy. I was able to clear it. However, not everybody has my abilities and not everybody has my training. 
And so I just want you to know that you need to look up the infrared thermometer because it is not safe. So they're dumbing down the children. And that allows them greater power because an uneducated population is easier to control. And they want to get rid of other schooling so that the public school stays as the vehicle of indoctrination. So that's what's going on. So now from birth to seven, download. From after that, playback. So when a child, or even not a child, quite often it's, it, it can be experiences of going to a new school or uh, moving to a new place or having a boss treat you like shit or whatever, right? Um, anything that like shocks the system. So what happens is that when you have that experience, you go into fight or flight. People know about that. They also know about freeze, right? You're like a, a deer in, in the headlights. So, but I want us to go to the level of data. Why do people get stuck? And, and then how come with all the talk therapy they did and the thousands and thousands of dollars that they've spent and the, you know, the years, they're still in the same place. And that is because the data has not been processed. So not only as a computer are you a processor, but you're also the storage, right? So you have the motherboard and then you have the storage. And so what ends up happening is that when you have an experience, that if that experience is shocking enough to the system, and you know, when you're young, it could be anything. It could be absolutely anything that could be perceived as a slight or somebody took something from you or someone spoke harshly to you or a teacher, um, you know, humiliated you or whatever. And I certainly worked with, I've done thousands and thousands of sessions by now. I've been in practice for more than 20 years. So I've heard it all. And, that, and, 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 and with great, great gratitude, I've been able to help people with a high 90% success rate in clearing. But I don't want to use the word clearing. That's something that people have gotten used to. First, they got used to coming to terms with, and that's really uh, sitting and talking, uh, which we have learned does very little. And the reason for that is out of, we'll say 60,000 plus thoughts a day, 5% of that is conscious and 95% is unconscious, subconscious thought. And what you're being governed by is actually unconscious subconscious thought but now I want you to think about thought in relationship to data we're gonna stop saying thought and we're gonna start saying data we're gonna stop saying issues we're gonna start saying data okay so now what ends up happening is you the delicate little computer that you are the divine delicate little computer the divinely delicate little astronomically, astoundingly, magnificent and precious computer that you are has an experience that makes you sad or, or uh, humiliates you or hurts you mentally, emotionally or physically in some way. And in that experience, three things happen that are basic categories you have an experience where you perceive something about yourself and make a conclusion about it. You perceive something about relationship. You make a conclusion about it and you perceive something about life and you make a conclusion about it. So those are core beliefs. The core belief about the self, about the other, and about life. So, but the core belief comes from certain pieces of data that you put together, right? So you have this experience, packets of data, and the motherboard needs to process it. However, you're not able to do it at that time because the motherboard is overwhelmed by the data. How he treated me, how she spoke to me, 
what that person did to me, all of those things, right? All of the billions and billions of bits of information that you're instantaneously making meanings about and stories about yourself and about this other person and about life and that immediately is happening stuns the whole system. And the motherboard doesn't get to process it. So in protection, your field cordons it off. And I've actually recently, from my, from my sharing my videos, people have been wanting to come to me to teach them how I do what I do, which has challenged me deeply um, to, to, to uh, deconstruct and, and, and look de deeper in how I do what I do. And one of the things that um, that we 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 can all agree on is that if we feel like somebody just kicked us in the stomach, that there's something felt in that area, right? And in fact, what's going on is that there is actually an energetic shift right in that area. It's something that has not been processed, that has has not been integrated. So this person that has this experience, right? You have this experience. What ends up happening is that that gets solidified, so to speak, at the energetic level. Now let's switch energy to data, right? Energy equals information, right? Equals matter. We don't want it to go on to become matter because that's how we create illness, right? We want it to stay at the energy level and then, and then, and then, uh, process it, integrate it, and, and go back to flow again. That's what we need for good health, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So you have this experience inside you. You have this, this default experience that brilliantly has been placed, divinely has been placed of protection, where you cordon it off. And we call that the unconscious, subconscious mind, right? You cordon it off. But it never, ever goes away. Why? Because the data has not been processed. And so what needs to happen then is that it needs to be brought up in such a way that it can be processed. And since it's actually in your subconscious mind, aka energy field, aka data field, the field that you are, people like me certainly can access it energetically or with talking I can feel where it is I can help you find where it is but I want you to understand more of the dynamic of what's going on inside you and so what ends up happening is that if there is any story that has you feeling ashamed about that when you try and do your own work on it, your subconscious mind will keep you away. You'll either start falling asleep, you'll decide to check out YouTube, you'll text a friend, you'll get uncomfortable, it'll keep you away from it. So it's very, very hard to do your own work for that very reason because the brilliance that has created you has set it up so that you don't go there because it will overwhelm the motherboard it will it will not be able to be processed in a healthy comfortable way right so you'll notice we use the word processed again it's a computer analogy again it's very appropriate so what needs to be done in a safe and uh, uh, environment is that that information needs to be brought up and processed that's what keeps people stuck it's that it's not processed by the computer that you are so people will find through EFT because what you're doing is you're 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 clearing the charge which is actually the story right the story is what creates the charge but the story was necessary back there the story was necessary back there and as simple as you could make it 
from your mind at that time to try and understand what was going on, right? It's purely emotionally logical. And from a child's perspective, the child is not going, oh, well, and see my mother, she grew up in a really tough environment. She was molested and, um, and so she's overwhelmed and that's why she's treating me that way, but it's really not personal. That's not what's going on. What's going on is that child is feeling unlovable. All of a sudden, mommy does mommy mommy got really angry at me and I don't understand and I just I didn't clean up my toy properly and or I didn't put the spoon away the way she wants me to or whatever. And that experience what are you going to do with that? You make a story. We're meaning makers, remember? So we make an immediate story and we go, oh my God, what does that mean about me? I'm not good. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. What does that mean about relationship? It's not to be trusted. It's not safe. You can't completely be free. Unconditional positive regard otherwise known as love, is not showing up there. Kids learn that very fast. And they will do whatever they need to do to try and get that back because they can't survive without it because it triggers the immune system and keeps it healthy. So if they can't get that unconditional positive regard, which most human beings are incapable of giving, sadly, they will do whatever they can to get whatever passes as close to love as possible. And in that circumstance, they now start developing their personality. And personality comes from the word persona, which means mask. So the personality is a strategy. That personality can become your problem. That personality is a strategy that outlives and goes on past what it needed to be and can keep you looping in that data loop. So what we want to do is we want to go there now that we're able to in, a, in, a, in an environment where we feel safe and we can look at what's going on, bringing it into the field that we are it is the consciousness of our field that actually integrates the information. And that's why it creates cognitive shifts as we're doing the work, not as in conventional talk therapy where you're using 5% of your consciousness and you're hoping that somebody's gonna come up from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind while you're doing the dishes and a week later bring it back into therapy. Now, I'm not disparaging therapy I have a, I have a, psych, a psychotherapy background myself uh, as a psychotherapist. However, we've, we're light years ahead of that. And that, that was a Newtonian physics paradigm. And it, now that we know that everything is at the level of the energetic and the data and the informational, we're able to move things much faster. At least I know I can. So, and, and the field that I'm in in energy psychology can and has and does all the time. So, um, so okay, so that so now the relationship is unsafe and what is that child gonna think about life? It's not safe. It's not safe, it's scary, right? Relationship scary, not safe. And so you start developing the armor, that's the personality, right? And so what ends up happening is the person feels stuck. And if you get them in the, to, to, to get a sense of the age and the memory and whatever it is that held that message, you get that information. Once you start addressing it at the energetic data level, the motherboard immediately starts taking it in, start processing it. The images start to shift. What they heard starts to get a little bit softer everything starts moving into the past. It's no longer in your face. You're no longer overwhelmed and you start having cognitive shifts. So it's at the data level of your being. And from that place, 
Now you can integrate the new information. And I always say it's like, you know, it's, it's sort of like the, um, uh, what is it? I'm thinking of the word, I'm thinking of the word mollusk, but that's not what I mean. You know, but the clam. Okay, so the clam has this little sand in there that irritates and irritates and irritates. And then what you're doing is you're putting these layers and layers and layers. You get, at the end, you get this beautiful pearl, right? Because there's always a gift in it somewhere. No matter how dark it is, there's a gift there. Well, we get a chance then to have the gift, the pearl, and no longer have the inflammation constantly be governing us on the mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual level. So, you, you are not your data. You don't have to stay stuck. Physically, you're also data. When you realize that, and I'm going to start talking about um, something that has channeled through me called the Lazarus Process, where I'm able to emit a frequency that has been doing astounding things. So, if I can do it, there's no reason why other people can't have their own version of that. My challenge is how to teach that. That's a whole other thing. Anyway, so, so I just want you to know that you're not your data. You're magnificent. You don't, th that stuck stuff is just data that hasn't been processed yet by the consciousness that you are. By doing that, once you do integrate that new information, from the understanding of your, uh, your sp spiritually evolved, maturely evolved self, that perspective completely changes about relationship, about what happened, about life, and your core beliefs then start to melt away and new ones take their place about possibility, about your divinity, about joy, about abundance about how incredibly blessed you really are and what a blessing you really are and I've just been wanting to share that for a long time I know it's not an easy thing to swallow I know that these principles may be new for you um, but play with them and uh, check out scientific understandings uh, about that and uh, I think you'll start seeing how they dovetail together and hopefully they will help free you even more. All right. I'm sending you love. Bye-bye.